Good morning, church. Good morning once again. Praise God. Are you happy today? David said, I was glad when they told me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm very glad today. My name is Caroline Kiare Kimondo. I am a congregant here in this wonderful church. I fellowship here with my family, and I am born again this morning. So happy to be with you, happy to share the word of God with you, happy to fellowship with you, and I know that it will be a wonderful, wonderful morning, a wonderful service. God tells us that in his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures evermore. May we receive that this morning and go out in joy. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning where you have gathered us to yourself. It is not because of our might, of our intelligence, of our wisdom, but by your grace, great mercies, Father. You have prepared for us a meal, Jehovah, Father, because you do not gather us in vain. Lord, may the word that you have prepared for us, Jehovah, Father, do the work that you have intended it to be done, Jehovah, Father. We thank you because each day you load it with blessings. Each day you load it with benefits, Lord. We come before you hungry, Jehovah Father. We come before you expectant, Jehovah Father. And we pray that your will will be done in our lives, Jehovah Father. You send your word and it heals us. May you heal us, mighty Lord. May you send us out with joy and lead us forth with peace, Jehovah Father. We thank you and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our readings today came from the book of Isaiah 54 and the book of Luke chapter 13. And my sermon for today is titled, God is not angry with you. God is not angry with you. We read from Isaiah chapter 1 from verse uh, from 54 from verse 1 to 14, but I want to focus on verse 7 to 10. And I will read it again. For a brief moment I abandon you, but with great compassion I will bring you back. In a surge of anger I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. To me this is like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth. So now I have sworn not to be angry with you, never to rebuke you again. Though the mountains may be shaken and the hills removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. This is such a powerful covenant, a powerful promise that God is giving us. And, you know, if you've read the book of um, the Old Testament from Genesis and Exodus, the journey of the Israelites, um, you experience the wrath of God. You see God when he is angry. Um, at some point, he actually tells Moses, step aside, song a candle. These people, I finish them. I just finish them and I make you into a nation. He says that not once, not twice. And even at some point, Moses, um, no, Aaron, has to stand in between the wrath of God and the people of Israel. So you get exposed to the wrath of God, the anger of God. But here he's telling us that there's another side of him. He will no longer be angry with you. He will be merciful to you. That he will have everlasting kindness towards you. He will always have compassion and he will not rebuke you again. It's such a wonderful promise and he makes that covenant and he seals it by giving us his son, his begotten son, that through the sacrifice of Christ Jesus, that through that sacrifice of blood, we are confident in God's love. We are confident in God's forgiveness because Christ takes all of our sins and he clothes us with his righteousness and he gives us his peace. Now, it's easy to read this and, you know, internalize it, but then still, you know, walk around like God is still angry at me. You know, you don't possess the peace that he has given you. 
when I was growing up, I don't know if you have the same story. Um, children used to assemble in the field in the morning and then they play from dusk till dawn. And then maybe sometimes you've been sent by your parent and then you forget, you meet your friends, you forget, you play, play, play. And then when it gets dark, you remember I had been sent to the shops. And now you start getting so fearful. You're like, when I get home, I'm going to be punished. I'm going to meet a very angry parent. And you start thinking of ways in which, you know, you can find an excuse. You can make your parent, you know, be less angry. Maybe if I go, I, I start washing the dishes very quickly or I start doing some work and maybe she'll forget uh, that I have done a mistake. And you know, it was quite fearful, you know, that fear of punishment, the fear of punishment. At some point, you'd even think, ah, maybe one of these other children, can, their parents can adopt me because you've, you feel like you've done such a big mistake that it is, it, it's not forgivable. What if, what if you knew without a shadow of doubt that you would be forgiven? What if you knew that when you get home, you will find peace and that, you know, you will, you will not be rebuked? You know, that different, what difference would that make? It would make a huge difference, would it not? Yeah? God is telling us in this book that there is nothing for us to be afraid of. He tells us, do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. He says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, come, come, let us reason together. Let us settle this matter together. Though your sins are scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. It is a, such a wonderful, wonderful promise. And there's something about this peace that he offers, this covenant that he offers, that I want to remind you this morning. That number one, it is free. It's not something you can earn. You know, when you've done something wrong to someone, you feel the need to, you know, rectify by works. You know, if I do this, if I do this. But God is telling us this peace that I offer is free. It is free. There's nothing you can do to earn it. You have not even earned it. He, while we were still sinners, he gave us this gift of peace. So you, you can't do anything to earn it. I was reading through the book of Leviticus, and the Israelites were charged with five offerings, um, five types of offerings to atone for their sins and to reconcile themselves with God. There was the peace offering, there was the grain offering, there was the sin offering, the guilt offering, there were five offerings. And they would do this to avert the wrath of God. They would do this so that they can be reconciled with God. But now God is telling us that he has already done it all. He has paid it all. He has offered the ultimate sacrifice. It is free. You come as you are. You come as you are and receive that peace. It's such a wonderful gift. He also tells us that it is perfect. It is a perfect peace. You don't have to look for additional peace. You, know, you don't have to do something extra to, to make it long lasting or you know, make it fit for purpose. It is perfect peace. That means there's nothing that can shake it, nothing that can disrupt it. He keeps us in perfect peace. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, He keeps in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on him because they put their trust in him. So it is a perfect peace. Now once you are in the Lord, you experience rest. You experience a peace that cannot be shaken. And the third thing that we know about this peace is that it transcends all understanding. It transcends all understanding. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 tells us, And the peace of God, <coughs> which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It is hard to understand this peace. You know, someone can ask you, why do you look so peaceful? You can't explain the economy, maybe it's bad. You know, things are looking thick, but you have peace that cannot be explained. That is the peace from God. It transcends 
all understanding. You can't explain, you can't rationalize it. It is beyond comprehension and it is a wonderful piece. And the fourth point about this piece that he promises us is that it's not like the world gives. You know, there's a piece that the world gives which sometimes is temporary, which sometimes is material. But God tells us this peace is not like the world gives. In John chapter 14, 27, Christ tells us that I give not as the world gives. That means it's above anything the world can ever offer. Anything the world can ever offer. Not a relationship, not a job, not, you know, children. It is above everything, not as the world gives. Such a powerful peace that he gives us. And then he tells us also that it is not for the wicked. It is not for the wicked. This peace that he has assured us, it is for the righteous. He tells us in Isaiah 48 verse 22, there is no peace for the wicked. So there is also a, um, a relationship he's craving with you that you shed away your wickedness so that you can achieve this, this peace. It is not for the wicked. And finally, it is in Christ. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19, it says, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. That this peace came, comes from with Christ. It comes with Christ. It is sealed by the blood of Christ. In John chapter 16, verse 33, he tells us, I have told you all these things so that in me, in Christ, you may have peace. This perfect peace cannot be found elsewhere outside of Christ. He says that in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Those are the characteristics of this peace that God is offering us this covenant of peace which is eternal it is everlasting now there are some things that may keep us from accessing this peace um, you may you know be asking yourself this peace God has offered like I don't always feel it I don't always feel it and it's a very human thing because there are some things that can prevent us from accessing this peace and if we are not conscious of it we can be outside of that peace which is so freely given and one of those things is fear fear can keep us from accessing and enjoying the peace that is so freely given by God in Genesis chapter 3 verse 10 you know when Adam had sinned and fallen he was trying to hide from God and he said he confessed, I had you in the garden, but I was afraid. So fear can make you start moving away from God. You know, you start hide, hiding from God because of fear. Fear of punishment, fear of his wrath, fear of the unknown. But it will keep you from embracing the peace of God, from embracing reconciliation. Fear will make you run away from the one, the only one who may help you, the only one who loves you above everyone else, the only one. And it is not the fear of God, actually, that keeps us away from, from, you know, keep us in fear. It's a fear of punishment. You know, like I was telling you, when I was young, I would, I would not even be so much afraid of my mom. I'd be afraid of the punishment, the fear of punishment. And First John chapter 14 tells us that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We fear punishment and not God. And that was also something that was characteristic of the Israelites. They would fear punishment. They would fear his wrath, but they would not revere him. They would not fear him. And so today I want to encourage you. Get to know God so that you have a healthy fear of God and not a fear of punishment not a fear of wrath because he has said he will not rebuke you he invites you to reconcile with him he has promised to be ever kind and compassionate to us so do not let any fear ever keep you from accessing the peace of God the wonderful peace of God the perfect peace of God and that's what Isaiah is also telling us today in um, in verse 4 
do not be afraid don't let the fears of the world don't let the fears of tomorrow don't let the fears of um even the economy keep you from accessing the peace of god because it has already been given it has already been given and fear can only steal what has already been given to you so freely the second thing that may keep us from receiving this peace is shame shame or reproach or guilt shame causes us to hide our sin from god and from others and it denies us the help and healing we may receive from god the same story the first time we encounter shame is in the book of genesis adam and eve before encountering the serpent they were naked and unashamed they were naked and unashamed but the encounter with the devil led them to be naked and ashamed so something changed sin made them to be ashamed it was not from god shame is not from god it tells us here you will not suffer shame shame is not of god and its only purpose is to keep you away from god to make you not want to go closer to him shame is from the devil this adam and eve had always been naked but now they are felt shame and as a result they were hiding they were hiding god asked them who told you you were naked who told you you are naked you've always been naked and now you are ashamed of it what has changed so never let shame keep you away from accessing the peace of god just like i said god is telling us come let us settle these things there is no sin that is too grave there is nothing that can separate you from his love he extends his hand ready to embrace you because you are his child it's because you are his child god is the only one who is able to wipe away the shame not alcohol not drugs not more sin only god can wipe away that shame and he tells us you will forget the shame of your youth you will remember no more the reproach of your widowhood in that perfect peace there is no shame and the third thing that can also take away or keep us from enjoying this wonderful peace is doubt yes doubt we stay away from the peace of god because of doubt because we don't know him we don't trust him we let the seed of doubt marinate in us and take away that joy of peace doubt will make you not receive from god james chapter 1 verse 5 to 7 tells us that one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind that person should not expect to receive anything from the lord work your doubts you know reinforce yourself your faith by getting close with god so that you may understand him so that you may not doubt him because doubt is like a very malignant disease a very malignant cancer that grows to steal the joy and the peace that is from god and the fall of man the fall of adam and eve it begins with doubt the serpent asked eve did god really say did he are ah, sowing the seed of doubt did he did he really say you're going to be successful did he really say you will be blessed did he really say you're forgiven did he really say that he will not be angry at you those seeds of doubt subdue them with the knowledge of christ jesus keep all those thoughts subject to the knowledge that is in this word of god you know the bible like i've told you it says he keeps in perfect peace perfect peace those who trust in god the opposite of doubt is trust trust in your god trust that what he has said is true because he does not lie trust that he has good thoughts towards you he does not wish you harm he does not wish you ill he does not wish you you know to be done away with he has said i will not rebuke you i will not be angry with you trust that he is a good good god he is a good father and the fourth one is unrepentance unrepentance can keep you from enjoying the peace of god 
in Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 6 to 7, it tells us, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will freely pardon. God extends his hands towards us that we may return to him in repentance. In repentance. Because sin and God cannot you know, be in the same you know, vicinity. But when we repent of our sins, he's so merciful to forgive us. We must build a culture, that, that, that nature to go to him seeking forgiveness for anything that we may have done so that we may always be reconciled with him, that we may always be in his peace, in his rest. He tells us that in Isaiah 30 verses 15, only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. When you return to him, you find rest. I don't know if you can imagine this rest. It's like, you know, when you've been running the whole day, you've been up and down, then you go somewhere and you find complete peace where there is no worry, there is no chaos, there is no anxiety, there isn't it's just peace and rest that is the invitation that god is giving us but he tells you you must repent come as you are repent and you will receive this peace now the first time we encounter unrepentance in the in in, in the bible is in the book of genesis um and we see it also in cain cain was unrepentant cain when he was um, when he was he, f he faced the judgment of God he didn't repent he told God now this punishment is so much I will be a restless wanderer he knew that outside of the presence of God he will be restless but he did not seek repentance we are those ones who are being invited come in repentance find rest don't be a restless wanderer like Cain come and find rest the prodigal son is a perfect example of the love of God and the mercies of God. The prodigal son got over his fear. He got over his shame. He had been feeding with the pigs. He got over his doubt. He was like, if I go, if I don't go, you know what will happen? He says, I know my father. He's kind towards his servants. If I go and I just be like his servants, I will at least be eating better. I shall return to him. I shall repent of my sins. And when he did that, he was overwhelmed. He, he found even more than he could have expected. He was not treated like a servant. He had a huge celebration, a huge party. He was met with so much love and joy. And that is the image of our God. That when we return to him, there is so much celebration. There is so much celebration. He says he forgets our sins. He remembers them no more. So this morning I want to invite you. I'm telling you that God is not angry with you. God is not angry with you. God is not going to be angry with you. He's not going to be angry. Not now, not ever. He just wants to have a relationship with you. He's extending his peace for us. He desires to give us perfect peace. In this world, there are many troubles, and there will be many troubles. But in Christ, he tells us, we will have peace. We will have peace. So this morning, I just want to encourage all of us. If you have felt you are away from that peace, if you have felt this peace is elusive, it is available. It is available, it is free, it is perfect return to him get to know him get to embrace this peace let go of any fear or any shame or any doubt or any anger that can lead you to unrepentance return to him and find rest return to him and find rest this is wonderful song that i don't know if you if you know it but I, i'll sing the chorus Find rest, my soul, in Christ alone. Know his 
power in quietness and trust when the oceans rise and thunders roar i will soar with you above the storm father you are king over the flood i will be still and know you are god so i'm inviting you this morning find rest in god find rest in christ enjoy the peace that cannot be found anywhere else but in christ alone let us pray thank you god for your wonderful word thank you god for your promises which are yes and amen thank you that you have loved us with an everlasting love that even while we are still sinners you loved us thank you for giving us the covenant of peace that we are reconciled with you through christ jesus i pray father that is there if there is anyone right now who is not feeling enjoying or embracing that peace through christ that they may return to you and find rest pray that you may convict our hearts to hover father to always seek your peace thank you for the gift of salvation thank you that we have we are made righteous through you jehovah father and i thank you for all this who are here today jehovah father all this your children jehovah father whom you love so much continue to teach us jehovah father like you have said all our children shall be taught by you and great shall be their peace may it be so for us may it be so for this who are present here this morning and those that shall watch us online jehovah father may you be glorified in jesus name amen